When setting up remote replication, it's very important to set up time synchronization because the traffic is encrypted. If they're skewed by more than 10 minutes on the source and destination side, you won't be able to set up replication. So first, this can actually be done simply and easily inside the GUI in most cases. If we go and we look at the control station properties, and remember architecturally that the Solera has both the control stations and the data movers. Both of them need to have the proper time set. You can see here that I've configured an MTP server, time zone, and the date is set at November the 4th. If you log in as root NAS admin, you can uh, modify the NTP server entry. Since I've logged in as NAS admin, it's, it's uh, not modifiable. And then if we go to the data mover, you can see that I'm, I've got it also configured with the same NTP server. So in theory, the time should be correct. Let's take a look at what it says. If we scroll down, you can see that the NTP server is set, but the boot, uh, but the current date and time is different, November the 2nd. So what happened there? Well, like with most NTP services, if the times are skewed enough um, from what the NTP server says, they won't time sync. And when that when that's the case, you basically need to uh, stop the time services, force a resync. Um, and then let NTP take over from there. And that's what we're going to do here. So let's log in as root because the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to change the control station attribute. Let's just quickly see if the, uh, if the, uh, this is the current date um, as we saw in the GUI. And I'm going to quickly see whether the uh, NTP service is actually running. And here you can see that the NTP daemon is actually running. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that the NTP service is also set up to properly start every time that the um, that the uh, control station starts. But now what I'm going to do to be able to force it to overcome the very large time skew is we'll stop the NTP service, force a time sync update, and then restart the service. So let's stop the NTP daemon. Then what we'll do is we'll force an NTP date update against my time server, which here is just a domain controller. And then you can see that the date is now properly set to November the 2nd. And now we'll just restart the NTP, uh, NTP uh, daemon service. Good. Since it's now set to auto start, from now on it'll always sync against that NTP server normally. So now what about the control what about the data mover? As is always the case, for data mover actions, you can log in as NAS admin. And the command here to modify the uh, NTP statistics are is server underscore date, then you specify the data mover. And again, data server two is is uh, the first data mover in any single data mover configuration. What we're going to do is we're going to delete the uh, existing NTP uh, uh, entries uh, and configuration. So I just made a little bit of a syntactical error here. Forgot that argument. OK, great. Now we've basically removed the NTP settings. And now what we're going to do is we specified to start against that NTP server. And you can see that it's resynced there properly. And now what we're going to do is just make sure by just typing in server underscore date time server uh, server two, um, you can see that the data is also properly set. So now we've got we've configured the control station, the data mover. They're using NTP, um, and uh, from now on, you don't need to do any other subsequent configuration. And by the way, if you go and you take a look inside the GUI at both the data movers, so we're just going to do a quick update here. By the way, you'll notice that you can actually right-click on any object there on the left tree. It's a very rapid way to be able to go to anything that would be in the in the GUI. And you can see here that the uh, time is properly set. And now if we quickly go back and we look at the control station, it's also properly set there. Again, if the times aren't too skewed to start with, you can just actually do this all via the GUI. Just log in as root, modify the control station, and then log in as NAS admin and um, you can modify the uh, data mover entry. Um, so just please make sure that you do this and, and make sure that uh, you have less than 10 minutes skew 
on any Solaris that are going to be replicated to one another. It's used for authentication as well as for encryption of the replication traffic. Great. Thank you very much and look forward to seeing you in the next module.